We are now going to have an example of how to solve a problem involving acceleration, force, etc. So we'll draw a free body diagram, establish a coordinate system, resolve any vectors that are not in x or y, we'll apply Newton's second law in x and y to create two equations, then we'll do some algebra. Here's a problem. Problem says, yo, find the acceleration of a radio flyer wagon holding three kids as it barrels down a 14 degree slope where mu sub k is 0 0.095. This mu sub k, let's get an equation for that sucker right there. We know that mu sub k is the force of kinetic friction divided by the normal force, and you should memorize that sucker right there. The mass is 100 kilograms. That's of the wagon and the kids, it looks like, because it says mass total. So let's start by drawing that free body diagram as they requested. We will have ourselves a slope at 14 degrees. That's not a very steep slope. But right here. We'll exaggerate the slope a little bit. 14 degrees. Radio flyer is going to be drawn kind of like this. And we're not even going to show the kids in there. Well, we can show them peeking out there. And they are terrified because they'll be accelerating really fast. You'll see in a moment. Dot in the center. And uh, now we need to draw the forces. First, we always draw the weight first. So we got mg right there. Next step <clears throat> is to um, Think about what other forces might be acting on this wagon. It says that it's rolling down a 14 degree slope, so friction will act in which direction? Very good. Friction goes that direction, directly up the slope because the wagon is moving down the slope, and it's kinetic friction because it's in motion. This is probably the friction on the axles of the wagon. And then there is another force. You can see if these were the only two forces, the wagon would be going like that. But there must be something else. And I guess that's what's keeping the wagon from going through the slope, and that's called the normal force. I'm going to try to draw it carefully because I kind of know how big it's going to be already. So we got the normal force, we got the force <coughs> of kinetic friction, and we've got m times g. And we're now on step three. I'll remind you that we need to now resolve, oh, we need to establish a coordinate system and then resolve any vectors not in x or y. So to do that, I want to point out to you that there are three vectors here. If we establish x and y like this, if we put x and y in the standard orientation, then we will have to resolve, well, we'll have to resolve f sub k and f sub n. That sounds pretty lousy, so let's not do that. Let's put x and y like this at the angle of the slope. And this is going to be very typical for these kinds of problems. So <clears throat> we're going to not need to resolve f sub k, and we also don't need to resolve f sub n. But we do have to resolve the weight. So we draw a dotted line in the direction of y, and we draw a dotted line in the direction of x, and of course there's a right angle between x and y, and this is m times g, well, is it cosine or is it sine? The question is, where is this angle, 14 degrees? And of course, it's right there, 14 degrees. We can justify that in another video. But this is the adjacent side, so this will be m times g times cosine of theta, and this will be m times g times sine of theta. <clears throat> Next step. Check. Apply Newton's second law in the x and y direction to create two equations. Seriously, do not look any more at what you can do. You can do things in your head, that's fine. But if you're struggling with this type of problem, just work through it, work through a couple of these, and then you'll be able to start seeing things a little bit faster. When I look at this, I can solve a lot of it in my head, but that comes with a lot of experience. So look at this equation that we're about to write down. We write down first, the net force in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. And this is a set of instructions right here. This says add them up, and this says all the forces in the x direction. So what are the forces in the x direction? Well, there are two of them. One of them is the force of friction. It goes directly in the x direction. And it is, well, it's to the right, and so is the x direction, so it's positive. So I'm gonna write F 
sub k right here. And then there's also mg sine theta. But let's look at this mg vector. This mg vector right here is going down. It's going, well, if we were to put it over here, it would be in the negative x direction and in the negative y direction. So I'll put an arrow right there. That component is to the left, and this component is to the down. So we've got this in negative y, and we've got this in negative x. So I'm going to say f sub k, well, it's purple, right? Let's live it up, times m, m times g times the sine of theta is the other x component. And that's just equal to, just as we had before, m times a sub x. Guess what? We're trying to find the acceleration in one direction, and this will actually be a sub x. So this is our goal right here, to find a sub x. Okay, we've identified what we're trying to do, and we don't know, unfortunately, we don't know uh, f sub k yet at this time, so we won't be able to solve this problem. How are we gonna find f sub k? Huh. huh, let's put a box around this equation and make a mental note to come back to it later because we just created this equation. The second part of step four says to apply Newton's second law in the y direction. We need to create another equation. In the y direction, we simply write down that the net force in the y direction is mass times acceleration in the y direction. And then this is a set of instructions right here. We're just going to carry it. Well, let's look at this set of instructions. This is the net force in the y direction, and there is f sub n, which goes directly in the y direction. So I'll write it down right here, f sub n. And then we're going to have to see if there are any other forces in the y direction. What do you see? m times g times cosine of theta? Boy, I hope so. But look, is it in the positive y direction or the negative y direction if it's going that way? Negative minus m times g times cosine of theta. And that's equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. You wanna tell me if this radio flyer is accelerating up off of the ramp? Are these kids launching themselves into space or are they plummeting down through the ramp? Is the ramp made of foam or mm, jello? Maybe, but I don't think so in this case. So guess what? The acceleration in the y direction is zero and that will lead us to say that the entire right side of that equation is zero. Hey, good news, we have created our second equation. At this point, we have done everything we need. Here's our third equation that we may need to use. And let's see, do you want to do this the haphazard crazy way or do you want to do this the systematic way? Let's go crazy systematic, whatever problems that may cause. Let's just do it the super, super steady way. First of all, we say we're trying to find a sub x. And so I get a sub x on its own. Take this equation right here, and I say a sub x is equal to, well, I'm gonna divide both sides by the mass. So I get f sub k minus mg sine theta divided by the mass. And they're all the same masses, so we don't have to be careful about that at all. And now I don't know only one thing in this equation, that's f sub k. So I'm gonna take this equation right here, Maybe I should solve it for f sub k first. That would say f sub k is equal to mu sub k times fn. I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna plug it in for f sub k. And I'm going to get, well, I'll get mu sub k times fn minus m times g times sine of theta divided by m. Now we still aren't finished because we still, well, we know mu k, that's fine, but we don't know f sub n. Check it out, we'll now have to use our third equation. And I should probably use a purple line for this sucker right here. But we don't have this solved for f sub n. We should do that first. f sub n equals, well, we'll just add mg cosine theta to both sides, mg cosine theta. I think at this point, before I plug this in, I wanna point out to you that the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. You can see that over here, the normal force out from the ramp is equal to the component of gravity into the ramp. And that is what guarantees that the wagon is not accelerating this way, nor is it accelerating this way. 
And so our kids will remain safely on the surface of Earth rather than launching off of it or plummeting into it. That's pretty handy. You'll usually find that F sub n is mg cosine theta. That's not always the case, but you'll usually find that to be the case. So I'm going to take this equation right here that we got by solving that equation. I'll bring this over and plug it in right there, and we will have a beautiful, beautiful thing happen. I'm going to get mu sub k, and now instead of writing f sub n, I plug in this business over here, m times g times cosine of theta minus m times g times sine of theta, and I'll divide it all by m. What do you see? Awesome. Let's write the answer out one more time. It's mu sub k times g times cosine of theta minus g times sine of theta, all divided by 1. You can write it one more time a little bit cleaner. There's a g in both terms. I can factor it out. And I find that it's g times mu k cosine theta minus sine theta. That's our answer for the acceleration in the x direction. Now, if you're feeling like you don't get enough closure just by looking at those numbers, we can do the calculation for you. No problem. And uh, let's see. We're going to say mu sub k is 0 0.095. We'll multiply that by the cosine of um, how many degrees? 14 degrees. And then I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract uh, the sine of 14 degrees. But I need to go back up here and insert multiplying by baby g. 9.81 times open parentheses close parentheses, and we're done. Whoa, look at that. It's negative. It says the acceleration is negative. Did we make a mistake? We should probably use just two sig figs, so 1.469. We're going to actually correct it to one negative 1.5 meters per second squared. And it's negative because this is the point where you're supposed to answer why. It's negative because put it in the comments. <laughs>